DBS Treasures Annual Wealth Summit powered by CNBCTV18.com. We live in a world where technology touches every aspect of our lives, including how we manage our wealth. Understanding how modern finance interacts with technology is crucial for making informed decisions about investing and managing money effectively. Hello, I'm Surabhi Upadhyay. Welcome to this special episode. Today, I'm sitting down with Prashant Joshi, Managing Director and Head of Consumer Banking Group India at DBS Bank, to talk about the future of wealth creation and wealth management in the digital innovation era of finance. Uh, Prashant, thank you so much for taking all the time and for being with us on this very important conversation today. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you, Surabhi. You know, we want to sort of uh, get into your mind and really understand how uh, DBS Bank is looking at the whole wealth opportunity, this segment and, and why the summit. Uh, but before that, you know, let me just dial back and talk about the overall big picture, the India story that seems to be firing on all cylinders. What has that meant for your operations and how you've seen sort of uh, the client profile built up over the last few years? Uh, DBS Bank Ag now has been in India for over 30 years. So 1994 is when we uh, came in here. And in a way, we have had the opportunity to ride the curve uh, with the entire India growth story, mm -hmm. which has effectively happened post-liberalization uh, over the last 30 years uh, and, and, and plus, and accelerated over the last 10-12 uh, years, if, 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 if one will. Uh, so actually, if you look at the three, four things, right? DBS Bank started as a pure corporate bank. Uh, and if you look at the environment, you know, that is why large corporates, manufacturing, that is that, and the service sector was just starting up mm. uh, in, the, in the 90s at uh, that point in time. And from there, the economy actually uh, made a pivotal change and became uh, a, a services-led uh, economy. Mm -hmm. And just as that was happening, at that point, DBS Bank then also started the consumer banking and uh, SME uh, banking businesses in India. Mm -hmm. And actually, that has accelerated over the past five years. Uh, as Lakshmi Vilas Bank amalgamated with us mm -hmm. uh, four years back, yeah. Uh, and then the real focus uh, actually of DBS Bank started on the consumer and SME banking, yes. which has been the path of growth uh, for many institutions in this mm -hmm. uh, uh, country. Mm -hmm. So from purely a cop being a corporate bank, uh, we have now become a corporate bank, consumer bank and SME uh, bank. Mm -hmm. And we think that actually the SME and the consumer bank uh, will be the drivers of the uh, growth of the bank uh, in, in future. And in the context of the consumer bank, uh, you know, the wealth creation in India has been absolutely phenomenal. Yes. Uh, if you look at just about probably a decade back, uh, probably there were 30 million taxpayers mm -hmm. who were filing tax returns. Uh, this year, probably 70 to 75 million taxpayers would have uh, filed uh, tax returns. And even that probably would be uh, just 20, 25% of the total households in this country. Yeah. You know, which means the the opportunity for the wealth and incomes to grow, it's still significantly higher. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the nominal GDP growth in India over the past several years, uh, it's been in uh, uh, double digits as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and if you see uh, even the equity markets have moved in step yeah. you know, with the nominal GDP growth rate uh, of, the, uh, of the country. Uh, equally, if you look at the startup economy, uh, and the amount of wealth that has got created, mm -hmm. you know, not just in big uh, tier one cities in the country, uh, but in the tier two, tier three towns of the country, oh. even their wealth creation is happening. Yeah. And participation of people from all walks of life, mm. uh, from where the wealth management was only the preserve of the select few, mm. you know, now from affluent to HNIs to you HNIs. Correct, correct. And some part of that, of course, this summit uh, intends to mm -hmm. uh, talk to. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, so whichever way you look at it, the story has been quite uh, impressive. Oh, absolutely. And, and the markets have been very charitable, at least the last couple yeah. of years as well. So people are feeling good. The wealth effect is very, very visible, especially post-COVID. Right. So when you talk about uh, consumer banking and the wealth management opportunity, uh, which of these segments uh, are you looking to tap into and, and look, look, looking to sort of really service? Yeah. Actually, as part of our consumer banking, we call it the wealth continuum. Okay. And let me explain to you what, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, what that means. Uh, you know, you'll talk about people with investable surplus, mm -hmm. a sm relatively small investable surplus. And those are typically coming from the affluent uh, uh, background, mm -hmm. right? So we look at the affluent as, as one segment. Mm. you know, which focuses on, let's say, up to say 30 lakhs of investable uh, surplus. So that's one category, the affluent category. Mm. The second category, then thereafter, what we call as you know, 30 lakhs to 6 crores, a fairly wide range, mm. 
Mm. Uh, but that's what we call define our treasures proposition as. Okay. So this is the core wealth management uh, platform that we have. 30 lakhs to 6 to crores. 6 crores, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the treasures wealth management platform. Mm -hmm. And then 6 crores plus what we call as treasures private clients. Okay. Uh, and, and these are then um, HNIs who are on the UHNIs, really speaking. Okay. Right? And who are uh, significant investable surplus, mm -hmm. therefore. Mm -hmm. Now, in India today, we have products, we have channels mm. uh, to address all these three segments. Right. But equally, I think what is differentiating, you know, for mm. DBS is its heritage, uh, which is based in Singapore. And, and therefore, uh, it becomes important for us to take advantage of that heritage. Sure. Uh, we have been voted the best private bank uh, in the region uh, mm. now for the last uh, two to three years. Mm. Right. And clearly, so therefore, after the treasures private client segment, then the private bank, which we have in Singapore, uh, again, for a lot of Indians, UHNIs, family offices, businessmen, Singapore is a natural destination. Mm. And we are able to then service, uh, uh, you know, them as well in Singapore, mm. you mm. know, through the private bank uh, that we have. Right. And then we also, within Singapore, you know, close to one third of the family offices bank with DBS, right. So if you, this is the wealth continuum that we talk about, mm -hmm. you know, be it uh, the affluent um, customer in India and from here right up to the UHNI, family, family, office family offices, level. private bank, whichever way. You know, as uh, DBS Bank has been integrating digitization, technology in your service offerings, in your product offerings, uh, what are the anecdotes or the interesting lessons that, that you've picked up so far along the way? Uh, actually, we started with the DigiBank uh, mm. first in India in 2016. Mm -hmm. We are the pioneers in uh, digital banking uh, in India. Mm. And we actually at that point thought that, you know, the entire bank will be on a phone, which has actually become a reality. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, seven, eight years later, actually it has become... You don't need uh, to go to the branch any longer, really, practically. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and that brings to my uh, first, mm -hmm. me to my first point, you know, Although it doesn't, we don't hardly ever go to the branches, which yeah. is absolutely right. Yeah. However, customers, in addition to the digital banking comfort and convenience, do look at the branches uh, as an assurance uh, point. Okay. Yeah, and that's what we also realized. Mm -hmm. uh, we are purely digital. We had close to two, two and a half, three million customers on the Digi Bank. But really, for uh, increasing the relationship size of those customers, what we really needed was, if you will, a digital strategy. Okay. And, and, and that is what happened, you know, when we got over 500 plus branches with amalgamation with Lakshmi Vilas Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, and then customers actually come onto the digital platforms with much more assurance and confidence. Okay. So in a way, having a branch network mm. becomes a prerequisite. Really? You know, for having the digital uh, play. Mm -hmm. Frankly, we have uh, started acquiring many more customers. Mm. Earlier, customers knew us. Sure. They knew us that we are the best bank in the world, we are the mm -hmm. safest bank in Asia, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, but the common gripe was, but I don't see you in India. Uh, and now they can walk into now a they branch can actually see and, and get an experience. That's right. Okay, okay. Right. So, so Fidgetal seems to be... Fidgetal is clearly one, yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. Okay. Uh, and then talk about some of the other sort of digital innovations maybe that you've uh, been sort of putting, uh, putting out as part of overall consumer banking, as part of wealth. Yeah. What seems to be working? One is a typical wealth uh, proposition mm -hmm. and that's mainly for the affluent segment. Mm -hmm. What we call as Digi Portfolio. Okay. Uh, you, you cover personal finance and you know that there is multitude of AMCs, yes. multitude of schemes, mm. um, you know, all focusing on similar themes. Yeah. Uh, and there are so many of them. It's mm. really difficult to uh, choose. Yeah. And for the affluent customer mainly, it's very difficult sometimes to do the research and uh, figure it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, on our DigiBank, we have a proposition called Digi Portfolio, okay. which is nothing but an aggregation of uh, mutual fund schemes mm. in line with the risk appetite and the risk profile of the mm -hmm. customer. Mm -hmm. So, customer just uh, does the risk appetite mapping mm -hmm. and then uh, the customer invests in a basket of mutual fund schemes. Okay. Then the customer doesn't need to decide which mutual fund scheme and mm -hmm. uh, it is backed by research from Crisil. Okay. There is a lot of credibility around it uh, as well. Okay. Uh, now, Digi Portfolio, we have seen great pickup. Okay. And it's literally a three-click journey mm -hmm. uh, in which you can do the investment um, and, and uh, track your returns over a period of time. The other product which a lot of HNIs do use, uh, it's more a banking product, but mm -hmm. I'll still talk about it because that's mm -hmm. a, uh, digitally uh, we have made great progress with that. Uh, which is a simple foreign exchange remittance. Mm -hmm. 
right? Okay. Now earlier you needed to fill up forms, uh, you know, you needed to go to the bank and you know, if you wanted to travel, you needed to buy the uh, foreign, if you wanted to remit, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it was a time consuming process. Mm -hmm. Now on the DigiBanking app, actually you can do it seamlessly within literally three minutes. Wow. Right. Remitting money overseas. Remitting money overseas. Okay. You, know, you add a beneficiary mm -hmm. and you can actually start transacting straight away. So we'll be back with more on this conversation in just a bit. DBS Treasures Annual Wealth Summit powered by CNBCTV18.com DBS Treasures Annual Wealth Summit powered by CNBCTV18.com Welcome back. You are with us on this special conversation. We're talking about the DBS Treasures Annual Wealth Summit powered by CNBC TV 18. That will take place a uh, little later this month. And we're in conversation with Prashant Joshi uh, here in India. Uh, so Prashant, just to sort of take forward the point on digital and technology, of course, uh, Gen AI is, is the buzzword, right? So I just want to know, if it, is, it, is it too early or, uh, you know, are banks like DBS Bank already looking at the possibilities that AI can unleash when it comes to consumer banking and wealth. Data analytics and AI mm -hmm. is at the center of what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, particularly in the DigiBank that I was, uh, you know, talking about last year for our customers, mm -hmm. uh, we generated what we call as intelligent nudges. Okay. Uh, where actually at the back end we analyze the customers' spend behavior, income behavior, um, uh, investment behavior, okay. and actually suggest uh, to the customer what the customers could potentially do mm -hmm. if they wish to. Mm -hmm. uh, we call these are intelligent nudges okay. or the next best uh, nudges. And actually our customers keep seeing these insights, these nudges, mm -hmm. uh, you know, through uh, our AI platform. Okay. And it's extremely powerful. Uh, and close to 60% of the customers on the platform engage with the nudges. No, which means that's they make a very sense. high engagement that's right. rate. I that's mean, right. uh, as a prompt coming and telling me that I should do it, and and for me uh, to actually act on that prompt, yeah. that means it's really working. Yeah, you first look at it and then say, okay, it seems to make sense. <laughs> you know, so that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so the engagement rate is uh, pretty high uh, mm -hmm. as far as that is concerned. Mm. Uh, and then now we are looking at how can Gen AI mm. uh, help in 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 this. Okay. Right. So I think that work we have just started. Okay. Uh, so, but data analytics and AI is actually at the center of everything, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, that way that we do. And how does that change the uh, sort of the business mix in terms of the feet on the street that you have to plan, or let's say the relationship managers that you have to plan? Because it's always about, you know, how uh, how do human beings and technology work in tandem? Uh, what what we believe is that the affluent customer actually is happy uh, receiving the uh, nudges. Okay. Uh, and acting on those nudges. Okay. But as you go up the ladder. Okay. As you become a treasures customer or a treasures private client customer, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, the conversations need to be much more sophisticated. Okay. And for those conversations, then a relationship manager is certainly required. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And actually customers do expect that. Okay. okay. And for this also, uh, there is a trend in wealth management which is clearly come in over the past five years in particular, which is mm -hmm. responsible. Mm -hmm. Which is customers from routine equity investments, from routine mutual fund investments, are also looking at alternative investments. Right. 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 Be those real estate mm -hmm. uh, funds, maybe the private equity uh, funds, mm -hmm. and with various other themes. Right. And they come with much higher ticket size mm -hmm. uh, for the right reasons. The customer needs to have the risk appetite and the understanding of the product to be right. able to do it. Mm -hmm. But as customers become more and more sophisticated, uh, they find it good to have the insights and the nudges uh, on the basis of AI. Uh, but they would actually like, still like a relationship manager at the other end who is able to make sense of that. Okay. And for that purpose, then we actually fashion these nudges. Mm. Uh, we send this, then the nudges to the relationship manager. Okay. And suggesting to them what's the next best conversation we ideally you should customer. have should, with the customer. So basically the relationship manager uses that uh, data analytics uh, created or generated nudge that's right. and then gets the customer to sort of act upon it depending on uh, their needs and their, that's right. their, their uh, risk appetite and their goals. Got that. So uh, beyond uh, AI and more integration of technology in, in wealth management, any other major trends that you see coming up on, on the horizon in, in this particular segment? Yeah. I talked about the alternative uh, investments, obviously, alternative you know, investments. Which, is a, which is a big trend, uh, you know, which is going to drive the markets uh, mm -hmm. and the wealth management industry. 
and the second okay, can you expand on that a little bit because uh, you typically till now thought of uh, you know AIFs and alternate investing only for the UHNIs yeah but now is it also sort of uh, percolating down and coming into the uh, sort of uh, the the rest of the spectrum. No, I think and uh, I think it, it is going to be restricted to the HNI and the UHNI segment. Okay. And now the minimum size of uh, alternative investments in also is one crore. That's right. And to the yeah. point which I earlier made mm. that these are inherently going to be more risky investments. Mm. Mm. And therefore, you need to have the understanding and the appetite both. Sure. sure. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. But another thing, you know, uh, which really hasn't changed. Mm. And I, I don't want to call it a trend, but something which is consistent and which is what DBS also stands for, mm -hmm. which is that irrespective of what happens, mm. there are three things that a customer expects from a wealth manager. Mm -hmm. One is competence. Yes. Uh, second is integrity. Yes. Because markets are what they are. Correct. Right. Uh, so, and when we speak with our customers, we say, okay, we can't assure, no one can assure you of any returns. Mm. But what as a wealth manager we can assure you of is integrity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the competence and integrity will lead to trust. Right. I was just wondering where trust fits into the mix so that you right. answered it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you have competence and integrity, mm -hmm. customers will you trust will you. Trust. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of things will change in the wealth management landscape, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But these three things won't. They will be the forever constants. Got that. You know, it's also a, a fairly, um, you know, exciting and might I add a crowded market, right? Because uh, there are foreign banks, there are domestic banks that are right. very active on, on, you know, uh, on this side. Everybody senses that big opportunity that, that you spoke of. So what do you think will be the, the defining factors that will differentiate, uh, you know, uh, the top rung winners from maybe, let's say, position two, position three? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I talked about trust. Yeah. So I think that, yeah. that is for first and foremost, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I won't talk about it again, but that is going to be the uh, first, first, uh, most important factor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the second thing, I think we genuinely need uh, to have and it, it's a fashionable thing to say that customer first mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. customers interests uh, mm -hmm. as an industry if we don't put it first right uh, I think we will struggle mm -hmm. right okay. and therefore I think anyone who puts customer interests uh, first mm -hmm. is more likely to win uh, than not okay and we do like to believe that uh, you know with the most trusted brand uh, with the safest bank with the world's best bank world's mm. best digital bank, mm. uh, we are in a position to gain that trust and drive mm -hmm. on that basis then drive the growth. Okay, and that's very good to hear from a consumer customer standpoint as well that ultimately even if that's how big institutions are thinking then my interests I know will be protected and it will be aligned with the with the interests right. of the of the institution. Uh, that brings me now to uh, to the event, the on-ground event that uh, DBS is planning. So tell us more about it. What, what was the thought process like? Uh, why the need to start the first ever wealth summit? Yeah, I think first ever is important. This yeah. is the first ever wealth summit that DBS mm -hmm. is organizing here. Mm -hmm. And as, as, as initially we talked about, right, mm -hmm. that there couldn't have been a better time yeah. in terms of the growth trajectory, uh, the mm -hmm. sustainable growth trajectory that India has uh, mm -hmm. seen, mm -hmm. the amount of wealth that is getting, um, you know, created in the country. Mm -hmm. And it's across the entire uh, country, mm -hmm. not just limited to a few cities, uh, um, and therefore, I think it's the right time in terms mm -hmm. of organizing the Wealth Summit. So that's, mm -hmm. that's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, of course, you know, as I talked about our Singaporean heritage, mm -hmm. you know, that allows us our entire wealth continuum mm. to be demonstrated mm. uh, and to be positioned, uh, you know, with, uh, with the HNIs and UHNIs in this, in this country. Mm -hmm. And eventually, I think mm. we would wish for this forum mm. to become the thought leader Right. Uh, in the wealth management industry. Right, right, right. That would be great. I mean, I'm looking forward to hearing a lot of the sessions uh, that will that will play out. Uh, what kind of conversations are you are you hoping to stir up? And you know, are you targeting any particular themes on investing or any uh, you know types of new innovative products? Uh, what can someone look look out for and watch out for? I think there will be three constituents uh -huh. in this. Uh, one obviously will be there will be a lot of focus on the macro uh, economics. Okay. Right, because that is what essentially uh, leads to creation. Drives everything. Drives really. everything, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So one one part will be uh, that. The second part obviously mm -hmm. will be about what is right for the investor. Okay. okay. And how do wealth managers make sure that what is right actually mm -hmm. gets uh, delivered? Mm -hmm. So wealth management practitioners will actually come mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that. Okay. And then the third, amongst one of the trends in investing, mm -hmm. also is ESG. Oh yes, absolutely. Right, it's yeah. an important trend in investing. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, in Singapore now, uh, we don't have it in India right now, but in Singapore, our RMs are actually able to tell the customer mm -hmm. what's the extent of their carbon footprint through their investments. Oh wow, so carbon footprint of the investment portfolio. That's right. That's really gold. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 
and mm. and and then the customer can start making the right choices. Right, right. right. So, uh, I'm, uh, just give us some anecdotes from you know what the Singapore experience is teaching you. ESG is clearly big. We understand that. Yeah. Uh, but are customers really taking it that seriously? Uh, sustainability and doing the right things for the planet is one. You know, maxing out and getting the maximum gain on my portfolio is another. So is, is the marriage really happening? I think where it has started <laughs> now is that customers are at least allocating a part of their portfolio mm -hmm. to ASG investing. Okay. Right? I think that that's the right step in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess as every all of us start not just talking about ESG, mm -hmm. but also acting on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it will become even even more important mm -hmm. uh, to my point. But as I said, starting with the allocation specifically with say funds or investments mm -hmm. meant for ESG mm -hmm. is a good starting point, right? So, so here in India, you, you're seeing those conversations happen between the conversation. And, that's right. The conversations have started, and okay. as more and more products mm -hmm. come in, I'm I'm reasonably sure that customers again, quite like behavior elsewhere, mm -hmm. will also start talking about allocating some part of their investments and eventually growing mm -hmm. them. Since we're talking so much about wealth, I can't help but ask you, and I know it's the wrong question to the wrong person, we'll get more answers during the summit, but uh, you know, when you talk to all your relationship managers, all the experts who are doing the, the product selection, uh, any, any major trend, any major sort of wealth idea, and I'm not saying for the next 12 months or 13 months, but what's kind of top of mind when you're talking to some of your uh, biggest clients in terms of just this is the big trend to follow if you're talking wealth management. If you're talking wealth management, mm -hmm. staying invested in India is the only uh, trend that <laughs> one needs to follow. I think that's a fantastic <laughs> note to end on, a very, very optimistic one and I can't, you know, argue. All right, Prashant, fabulous conversation. Thank you very much and I'm already quite excited to to hear what all those uh, invigorating panels are going to throw up at the Wealth Summit. So uh, thanks for joining us today and, and see you soon. And viewers, that's a note for you as well. See you soon at the DBS Treasures Annual Wealth Summit powered by CNBC TV 18. And uh, these are on-ground events. They will take place in Mumbai and in New Delhi. So look out for all the insights that we get from them. Thank you so much for watching. DBS Treasures Annual Wealth Summit, powered by CNBCTV18.com.